All right, so like I said, uh, we're going to have a couple couple slides here to go through before we turn it over to our speaker tonight. So welcome, everybody. This is the OWAS Bonita Springs quarterly meetup, April 2023. We meet virtually the first Tuesday of the first month each quarter. I know that's a long string to remember, but so that's why I put the dates below uh, at 6.30 p.m. So feel free to watch our website and our meetup page for details of the talks coming up who will be presenting, what the topics are, and so forth. Our next meetings for the rest of the year are going to be July 11th and October 3rd. July 11th, because as you as you guessed, that's not the first Tuesday of that first month of the quarter. Uh, that's because July 4th happens to fall on that Tuesday this year. So we did move it to the next week. That is only, that's the only uh, schedule change for now, unless October or July, we have a hurricane, uh, which did cause us to move last year. So hopefully no hurricanes cause us to move. And these are going to be good dates for the rest of the year, July 11th and October 3rd. Feel free to grab those on your, put those on your calendar or just follow our page, follow me up and, and you'll be good to go. Our chapter co-leaders are myself. I'm Mike Long. We have Steven Schomburg as another co-leader and then David Pirro, who's joined us tonight, Professor Pirro. Uh, so you know him already. I see that uh, he has invited his class, which is fantastic. Again, no pressure, Ryan, but we should probably teach these guys something. Okay. Um, oh. See more people are joining, so excuse me for a moment while I hit that join button. There we go. So going forward, uh, so for Southwest Florida, there are a lot of tech groups and in, in, uh, mute people. There we go. All right, so we have uh, a lot of tech groups here in Southwest Florida. So this is just a sampling of them. We have Southwest Florida coders. Uh, they are probably the largest and oldest group in the area. And any programming language, they likely have somebody there that knows that programming language. So if you ever need help with programming, reach out to them. They have at least one meetup every month uh, and then sometimes two. There's the Pi Ladies of Southwest Florida, which actually is no longer Pi Ladies Southwest Florida. It's now Pi Ladies South Florida. Uh, they joined forces together and now it's just Pi Ladies South Florida. So they are uh, meeting uh, also once or twice a month now. I think they move their meetings till uh, to the lunch times to do lunch and learns. So check them out if you're interested in Python. Southwest Florida Tech Knights, they are currently on hiatus as they regroup and rebrand uh, what they're doing. So keep an eye out for them. Southwest Florida SEC, which is the InfoSec community in Southwest Florida. Uh, of course, making layer eight great again, if you know your OSI model and you could probably guess what layer eight is. Um, they're a great group. Uh, that's the other group I run and they meet the first Tuesday uh, or not first Tuesday, that's a loss. They meet the third Tuesday <laughs> uh, every month at 6.30 p.m. So their next talk is coming up here on April 18th. And then there is VR and AR of Southwest Florida. So anything related to the realities, it's virtual reality, augmented reality, extended reality, mixed reality, all of the realities. If you're interested in that kind of stuff, check that group out. Uh, lately, their monthly meetups have been tech focused to teach people the basics on how to create assets, how to how to how to create something in VR, uh, which has been fantastic for those who are just getting into the space. There's Southwest Florida data, so anything data, data related, whether it's data lakes, data swamps, data, 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 data privacy, data security, uh, that's the group to check out. And of course, us, the uh, OWASP Bonita Springs chapter. Upcoming events for OWASP. So coming up, uh, not, not very soon, but later in the year, October 30th through November 3rd, there is the OWASP Global App Sec in Washington, D.C. this year. Uh, then there are some um, shorter events uh, happening throughout the year, too. So that's AppSec Israel on May 15th to 16th, AppSec Days Germany, June 5th to the 6th, and AppSec Days Pacific Northwest, uh, June 10th. So uh, sometimes the AppSec Days events are free, sometimes they're not. Uh, so if you're interested in traveling or if you're already located in those areas, uh, you can check those events out and head off, head off to them. Uh, watch, watch OWASP main page or OWASP main meetup. Uh, they may list other events, too, throughout the year. Upcoming events in the area. So all of those uh, groups that I introduced a couple slides ago, plus some extras like Hack Miami, ISSA South Florida, Isaka South Florida, and OWASP South Florida, which is another local chapter, uh, are listed on here, as well as the Tech Alliance, uh, which for most of those groups that I previously mentioned, except for OWASP, uh, they're part of the Tech Alliance. It's a, a larger um, cooperation, then, if, you, if you'd like to say that, to... Uh, help us bring more high level talks to the general public instead of doing deep dives like we do with our individual meetup groups. I will drop this list of links so you don't have to worry about trying to furiously scribble it down before I move to the next slide. Um, once we move to the presentation, I will start dropping links in the chat. All right, so this is where I take a pause and turn it over to all of you to tell us your needs. Are you looking for a job? Are you looking to hire somebody? 
Do you have specific uh, questions that may have a short answer? Uh, feel free to unmute, your, unmute yourselves and speak up, or you can drop uh, what you're looking for in chat, and I can certainly help with asking it uh, via chat. Nobody tonight has anything, not looking for a job, looking for a group to go to a wasdu shop. Awesome, Ian. Um, where are you located? Let's start there, if you um, don't mind I'm saying. I'm Fort Myers, but remote's fine, too. All right, Fort Myers, awesome. <laughs> and don't know what don't, don't know what to ask yet. All right, uh, so great. That's something we'll have to look into locally. I know that Jonathan Singer from up in Tampa occasionally does a juice shop talk. He just did one for Swifflesec last month, and he is going to be speaking about the same topic with OWASP juice shop. Uh, coming up at Hackspace Con on April, I think his talk is going to be on April 15th, which is Saturday, over at the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, so if you're not familiar with Hackspace Con uh, and you're willing to pay the ticket price, or be a, if you're a student, you get 50% off, which is really good. Um, yeah, you can check that out if you're willing to travel across the state uh, and go to that conference. Uh, otherwise, we can keep an eye out for other talks that are coming out coming up for Juice Shop. All right, Marcus is uh, approximately two years in cybersecurity studies, looking to expand my knowledge and specifically land a job in web app pen testing. All right, so anybody here uh, looking to hire for web app pen testing, feel free to message Marcus and uh, you guys can connect. Anybody else? All right, well, while we, while we wait, uh, I do want to mention my employer, who is Arthrex. Uh, is hiring and for a variety of different IT jobs. So check out careers.arthrex.com. They are based in Naples, Southwest Florida, and they have uh, many positions open. They're always growing, uh, double digit organic growth year over year, including during the pandemic. So fast growth, fast innovation, fast to market. It's a great environment, great company to work for. Uh, check them out. They're, they're always looking to expand. And I will drop that link in here in chat too. So I see, thanks, Dwayne. You dropping a link about Juice Shop. Appreciate it. More information from Professor Piero. Awesome. Oh, disappeared though. All right. So I've just dropped the careers.arthrex.com link. So feel free to check that out. Um, whether it's in IT, uh, you may there may also be jobs not actually in IT, but still doing software development. Uh, there are other groups within the organization that don't fall under the IT umbrella, but still do software engineering, software QA. Uh, type work, um, admin and cloud stuff and stuff like that. So yeah, take a look at that and see if there's anything of interest. All right, I'm going to give it one more open call. Anybody else? Okay, nothing heard. Oh, wait a minute. Let's see. Uh, L says, I see in software dev. So that's what I will be looking for. I am in. Awesome. Cool. Check it out. Okay, we're going to move along then. If you think of anything else, feel free to drop it in chat. So what everybody's here for tonight is Ryan. Uh, Ryan has graciously granted us some of his time to talk about his new book, Z Attack Proxy Cookbook, Hacking Tactics, Techniques, and Procedures for Testing Web Applications and APIs. Uh, he will run through a couple of exercises during this talk. And I've got his introduction here, but I'm not going to read through it. You can either quickly read through it, or Ryan is going to be much better at introducing himself than I ever will. So Ryan. I am going to go ahead and stop sharing and turn on sharing for you and turn it over to you. Thanks, Mike. Uh, thanks to everyone for having me. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I'll be brief. Yeah, I do like uh, work in application security and, and do some other stuff in penetration testing, mainly web app um, and, and done that, you know, for a few years on the side. Um, and as you said, I just wrote a book with a couple other friends, uh, Nestor Torres and Ahmed Amwalu, and um, they kind of do some different things, but I roped them into it and, and uh, put them to work. So uh, just released not too long ago, March 10th. Um, so hasn't even been a month yet. Um, so, you know, if you uh, want to pick it up and you meet me and run into me, we're happy to sign it for you and um, get it out to you. It is on Amazon and uh, the regular pack pub uh, through the publisher we went through. So, so um, what, yeah, go ahead, Mike. Sorry, real, real quick question. Uh, so I mentioned a conference earlier, the Hackspace Con. Do you plan on being at that conference? I will be there. Yeah, on the 15th. Okay. The 15th. Great. Just so Saturday. just the Saturday. Okay. So that way, anybody here who does go to the conference, then you know, now you can catch them in person. All right, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Um, I guess one one thing to note with the book um, that I think will help you is since some of you are kind of starting out and looking into web app and things of that nature, we ended up taking the entire like, OWASP testing guide version four and pretty much going through each each section, chapter by chapter, pretty much in order. So the book's order is the same order as like the testing guide. Minus some of the uh, controls that don't really fit with Zap, um, 
we really want to be zap focused with the book. So everything that is in the book is pretty much using zap as your main tool. So if there's anything missing, you know, that's kind of the reason why. Um, yeah, I don't know where you want me to start. Let me see here. Let me share screen. So I'll share this. This is kind of like when you first start up. Um, and if you want like a testing environment, juice shop, as they were talking about, you can run it from NPM. Uh, just install it in that way. It'll, you can run it from your command line. You don't need to like fire it up. It used to be where you could use like Heroku servers to like host it online, but now they've gone to a paid program. So you can't do that anymore, but pretty easy to install, install on a lightweight. It doesn't really take up a lot of resources. So I'll leave it up here because if you run it from your own command line, you'll actually start seeing, you know, information come up on the command line on things that are happening on Juice Shop itself. So I'll um, walk you through kind of a basic setup and, and things of that nature. Um, when you first fire it up, it'll probably be white. I've just changed my screen to the dark mode because it's easier on my eyes. Um, and you usually have this pop up unless you tell it to forget about it. Um, I usually just kind of start like don't persist. But if you're doing an engagement, you might want to like actually persist and save the file. Um, that way you have your kind of uh, historical data to look back on when you're trying to pull it up for um, your reporting and, and that work. So I guess first starter is when you, um, you can either go automated scan and type it in. Uh, for this purpose, I'll go manual scan because this will be like your burp suites um, uh, in in-house browser that's with it. And we'll do the local host 3000 uh, is the point they hold on. So this is what pops up when you first come in. It kind of gives you a quick synopsis, like, hey, um, this is the HUD. And you know, you have like your kind of your options on the side. You can take a tutorial if you'd like, or you can just continue. Um, Juice Shop, right? Starts putting up all this stuff for you. Um, and then typically you'll see stuff on the side that's from that HUD display, usually a button down here that'll kind of put it all up for you, um, different options. And this is kind of where you have, um, I think sometimes the aspect gets weird. That's the only thing I've noticed sometimes. But we'll go forward. It might need to scan first. Um, but pretty much once you drop it in, it's going to start coming up here on your, your sites. And then I usually right click and include site in context. This is basically adding it to scope that you'd see in Burp Suite. Um, you can add other you know parameters or just as it keeps coming up on the list, keep adding. Um, doing that, you can actually hit the target sign here and it'll just reduce all the noise that's not associated with your uh, application or web application. Um, so big starters, you know, it starts kind of passively scanning in the same sense as Burp. Um, you can kind of turn on more options up there. You can either click that wheel or you can go to tools options. And then there's um, a section for um, changing that. There's so many options, even I'm like always double like guessing like where the heck am I looking? But um, I guess one thing while I'm here, the network, uh, if you don't want to go through the in-house browser and you want to use like your own Chrome or, or Firefox, then you can get the cert here, you know, just save it. And that's the one that you'll, you'll install your certificate for your root certificate authority for your browser. So you can keep getting that malicious pop-up that could block you or it's just kind of a nuisance. Um, local servers and proxies, you can change, you know, where it's coming from, right? If you have a specific IP address that it's coming from, like, you know, if it's hosted in cloud or something. Um, and then your port, right? You can change your port. So that's kind of some quick things for, for this. Um, there's, there's, like, there's so many options here, you know, fine tuning your scanners, um, uh, the fuzzer, right? There's a, there's a lot of different options. Um, so read my book for those. It's almost like two or three chapters of just just the options. It's the it's impressive how much Zap goes through. So big thing from here is you can actually just start attacking it, and it sets up however you want to set your policies. You know you can change vectors. Um, the technology is a good feature I like that I don't really see too much in Burp. I think you have to go into the more specific options with Burp to get it in this narrow. And if, so I find this a little bit easier on this end. If you know what database you're working with or operating system, you can kind of fine tune it here so you don't send so much noise to your target. Um, and same with your, your policies here, you can kind of fine tune them to like how you want, how crazy a scan or scale back. And same with filtering, you can kind of narrow this down. I'll leave it all default. One other thing I like is when you hit that button here, I'll still do it again, right next to the scan bar, there's this little heartbeat and that you can actually start skipping stuff if you don't like it. Like, I don't want this. So you can just hit the double arrows and it'll bypass it. So if you know certain things that are like, it, you know, you see like your, your request going up to like a thousand, you might want to skip it and might not just be doing anything. So that's one, one feature uh, just to help going through your web app, not pen test. 
and speeding up the scans uh, or scans that are getting hung up or, or something to that nature or just massive you know you might just want to look for a sample um, and move past so that it doesn't keep uh, keep you there for hours so let that go through and I think you saw that the little there was like a little uh, party confetti burst going on over here and that uh, was basically saying we won a challenge just from the scan itself looking for error handling but here on the command line we scroll to where it goes out you'll see like a blue text that that shows you like if there's like a vulnerability that came through there it is so that's one thing i like about at least juice shop on your own personal uh server that you stand up for it is that you can kind of get some of the a little bit more information about it um or if there's errors that are going through so this shouldn't take too long but we can uh, see how it's going up we can skip it especially we don't see any alerts happening here on the column if it's going up high just just skip it i don't think it's got anything to do with that so we can kind of like move past a little bit and that's one thing about fine-tuning it and like narrowing it down there might be like stuff like you know so apis and um, i think juice shop is open api so you don't even need that you can get rid of it like no sql things of that nature um i don't even know if these are like really exist for my own personal stand up and then hopefully my ram stays good for you all let's just stop it i think it's hanging up a little bit so it just like really starts eating up the ram as it goes through the scans yeah, and, uh, you know, and I think coupled with um, having Zoom on and that might uh, make it go a little bit worse, but that's okay. Oh, here we go. So sometimes on the other screen I have, like if Burp finds like a JSON file or something that it can download, it'll try to download it for you. So it pops up with like a file folder. And then from there, you know, you would have to uh, close it out. So it was kind of getting some of that activity, but it looks like it might have hung a little bit. It stopped, it stopped. Okay. So just kind of navigation, um, you'll see like your alert window and I guess so. this is another big feature I like about Zap. I find Zap's parsing rules a little bit nicer than Burp. Uh, no diss on Burp. You know, it's a great, fantastic tool with great interface. Um, I just find like there might be a little bit better alerting that I see that comes through um, from this side with Zap. Um, but you'll get like your errors, right? And if you don't have like the professional version of Burp, you're not going to get like references or solutions. They kind of hide that from you. You have to pay for it. Community Edition won't give that to you. So that's one thing I like about Zap is you'll get like, you know, what uh, control it's sitting on top 10, where it's coming in the top, you know, the actual testing guide. So it's giving you some good references. Um, and then also giving you, here's a cheat sheet series reference um, for, re you know, recommendations and best practice. And then um, the same thing, like here's your the parameter that it found in the message here. There it is right here. SQL, whatever by name there. SQL light. Um, and then if you open it up, here's where the, uh, you can see it, it's kind of changing at the top here. It's not like really where you see it side by side in like burp. So just switching it from the top here is where you're going to see like your requests. If you see it going down, the timestamps changing. There you go. So that's, that's where you're going to be noticing like your, your changes. So now if you want to do like repeater that you would see like in burp, you're going to have to open up this request, right click, and then just go to open resend request editor. So there there's repeater is called request editor and that's what lets you um change whatever parameter you want up here it looks like a little smashed that probably could be a ram and then getting the same error so that's where you can start manipulating things you know whatever you want to put right and see if you can do something that doesn't like that so that's that we'll, I'll, I'll show you in a minute like where you can get into some of that type of work um the other thing I'll show you is like when you go into fuzzing, like everything comes from the attack up here. So if you have like other um, extensions and things like that, you'll start seeing them up here. They do like an Ajax scanner, which is a little nice too. It's a little different. I don't, you know, I don't recall seeing that in Burp itself for specifically Ajax. And then your fuzz. <clears throat> and then fuzzing is where you're like your intruder is for Burp. And so here's where you'll actually start like manipulating things. You can put it in your like username or passwords and, and start adding like payloads. So let's capture that. So to capture it, because everything kind of seems like automatic, right? Everything just went automatically. So to actually capture in motion, like you would it with your uh, intercept in Burp, you know, you're gonna you'll have to hit this break and set a breakpoint. And from setting a breakpoint, that's when you uh, where you go, it'll like hang up and wait for you to kind of move through. So it has like these arrows here to move through as it's loading. Uh, the other arrow on the right will just continue on and just push it all the way through. So having that, that's where you can actually start like, let's say, you know, doing like a SQL injection bypass, like log in. So if you see like this, oh, there it goes. There we go. So now from here, like I think you use this page. Yeah. So like while it's in break mode, because this see your tabs up here, you got your just regular request response, but then you have your, your break. So you can actually manipulate stuff here if you want. You can keep walking through. There's a, you know, SQL light, right? Like now you're getting like database errors that are coming out, um, even a SQL statement, like what's going on behind it, you get that kind of understanding in this scenario. 
Um, and then you see it splash here on the page too. We're saying like object to objects, and you know you have like a SQL injection problem going on. So we can do two things here. I guess um, wherever that history is, let's go back to the history. There it is. So like the log on here, from here, if like this is where you want to fuzz for like a word list. You can remove that, but in here's where you can like double click and add. And so it'll pop up for your payloads. So this is where you're actually putting your, your word list. You can pull from file or if, you know, Zap has their own kind of built in for uh, fuzzing, you know, doing discovery or uh, if you don't want that crazy amount of noise, you might be able to find like username. Let me actually go to a file. Hold on a second. So I can just going to find it on my PC. So big word list would be like sec lists or you know, the rock you file if you're looking for just uh, simple stuff. It's freezing up again in a second. Yeah, sometimes I've noticed that if you got too much going on, it, it can kind of lag behind. There you go, so I'm just getting to my file for sec lists. And then I'll just pull up a, like a word list, you know, um, nothing too long since we know there's an admin. There we go. Um, and so then you just add. And from that, you can hit start fuzzer and then it opens up here in another tab. And usually like, if this state is, if there's something that's there, it didn't like it, unauthorized, you'll see like, you know, either a 200 code or the state usually shows like a little like cookie. I don't know what you want to call it, like a yellow cookie, like a sun to tell you like, hey, you know, we found something, either a, re a redirection or, you know, something came back like reflected. So if you don't mind, quick question. Yeah. Uh, when you were loading the file, um... There was a limit tick box. Is that is that for rate limiting it, or is that like limiting how many entries it's going to use inside of the actual payload here? Oh, uh, I know. What, I think I saw it when you were adding adding the um, the list. Okay. When you were selecting the file, yeah, right there, that limit. So, is what what exactly is limiting it? Limiting. Uh, yeah, I think it's just limiting like how much you can put in number of payloads. Okay. From the file, like yes, yeah, so if you have like ten, those word lists that are like ten million you know, long, you can kind of just keep yourself from overloading, I guess, with those. Got it. Um, and like kind of, so if you hover over here on your mouse, it's going to start like showing you what it is. There you go. If you can see that, you know, it's yep. a little problem. Yeah. So that'll right, so, help you. So, so next question then, uh, is there actually rate limiting? So you know, I don't think I've ever tried to <laughs> max out, like how many you can put in here. I don't well, think not, not, sorry, not how many values you can put in here, but rate limiting as far as how many connections it's going to make it once, and how quickly it's making those connections, because, you know, some, okay. some, some, mm -hmm. you know, web apps will, will have that type of protection where it's rate limiting to stop certain types of attacks there you go. here you go fuzzer so here's here's like where you would i think n narrow down kind of like what you're looking for um threads per scan right like this yeah. is where you can increase your threads per scan and then like how many milliseconds in between Perfect. if you want to like yeah so that's that's all in your options um which is that little wheel or under tools options it looks like they're going to give you like breadth first or depth first and then again like how many allowed maximum or or uh, retries right how many retries we're going to go for so I think that's kind of some like points like, you know, as you bring up, like where some of the confusion happens with Zap mm -hmm. is in, and more intuitive with Burp, right? There's more in Burp, you have it like kind of like right there, right? And then you just tab over to the options where like in here, you kind of have to go to a different place to find like where, what you were talking about, right? Rate limiting. Yeah, um, that's okay. I think usually it's more of familiarity with the tool. I, I, I equate it to something like Photoshop and GIMP. Like GIMP can do yeah. quite a quite a much the same thing as Photoshop, but if you learn on mm -hmm. Photoshop, sometimes it's make the, it's hard to make that switch then because you don't know where the tools are at or where the options are at. So no, it's mm -hmm. good to know that it's on on here. It's under that tools menu or or the wheel menu. You can get to things like this. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. So let's see here. What do I want to do? So yeah, I mean, I guess that you know that fuzzer is going to come in handy a lot, right? Like you're, if you want to find passwords, right? Um, uh, you know, if there's a guest account, right? We can we can test the same in the fuzzer for a password list and see like what gets you in. Um, going back to kind of like juice shop itself, right? Like simple SQL injection, and a lot of times, you know, you can try other parameters like uh, if you want to put in something empty. Sometimes you might need a name, um, but you can kind of start stuffing normal characters you would see within like SQL queries or even like cross-site scripting if there's cross-site scripting. And you're going to get something back. Like if there's something that's there, you can probably look to see what's going on. Yeah. So that came back right away, but I didn't break on. So, you know, there's something happening, right? Like with SQL injection. I want to see if we can see it in inspection. But sometimes you can see, I don't know if this is, I don't know how their, uh, their built-in browser, how functional it is. I'm sure it's okay. Where's the, uh, the label? I don't think it's giving me what I want. Not really. Just kind of shoulder the comment field. <laughs> Sorry. Going off on a tangent here. Um, 
But anyways, you know, your simple like percent 27, right? You hear that in Hack Miami all the time. That's the single quote mark and then or one equals one, right? And so with that, you, you're, you're talking about because we saw the SQL error, now you're getting back like what database is sitting behind us. And now you can kind of look up like what actual uh, query statement that you can use to do a bypass on. And so for this, you know, we're talking just what's happening is right. You're, you're, you're commenting out, um, you're closing the parameter of, of the input for the SQL statement that's looking for username. And I think, where was the, yeah, uh, there we go. So like, you know, in the back end, right, it's selecting from where the products are. Um, and because of that, you're closing out that parameter and then just saying, oh, or, you know, a true statement, Boolean statement, like one equals one, right? And so it can't find what you're trying to look for, which is an empty username. So now you're just saying, well, it's true. And so it's processing on the back end, and now it's giving you access. So that's kind of what's happening here um, for those who are wondering. And so a lot of the, you know, you want to look up, right? Like, wow, what's going on? You can, that's where these references will come in handy. Cheat sheet or... Um, even the, the testing guide itself and kind of give you some more um, thought process and prevention, right? And like, so it's something like that for, you know, the dev side, they need to put like better parameterization for the statement that you're entering to go into the back end. And then same with input validation, right? There's, you're allowing um, specific uh, parameters that are used in the query to like actually uh, trigger a statement. It should be just kind of put in as a string. Um, that way it doesn't get processed. Um, yeah, like, um, I, sorry, I, I like how it okay. puts in those... I like how it puts in those references and, and then the additional alert tags too below, which are links as well. Uh, the solution, like all that stuff is so helpful to go from being on the security testing side of things or software quality side of things, doing SQA testing to be able to hand this off back to the developer and say, here's the issue we found. Here's, here's, the, here's what will help you correct it, right? And give them all that information to, to help them. Um, you mm -hmm. come back empty handed and just say, I have a problem. You know, it's like, well, where do I start? Right. And uh, what's the problem? And then and also, because you've got the information up in the, the panels up top, you can prove it too. So you can get that evidence as well. It's like, here's what happened. Here's, here's the different items. Here's the, here's what was returned. Here's the response. Here's how we did it. Like you can replicate it too, and just turn all that information over to your developer. And then they could take it from there to do the, the correction. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and I guess speaking of that reports, right. So in this, they have like a reporting feature. Um, I've heard you see some mixed things. If you want to like actually run it, you can kind of generate a report from this tab here, or even from the top, there's other, um, you see like those little blocks. This is the marketplace. So I went on a different screen where you can add kind of more, you know, custom built, you know, community built extensions that are happening. So I think there is like some extra report ones that are in here. I'll let you guys play around with that, but they're only inbuilt one here. Let me go. Screw me. I'll just put it to desktop. So it builds like a quick HTML report. Um, pretty standard. It's not like you know this beautiful report, but like any any other kind of phone scanner that you would see. Um, it'll kind of give you your, I guess, how they how they're building it, like how they're determining like you know the risk and the confidence levels that are happening. Um, same with like a chart, right? And then they kind of give you like a summary of like where uh, they're finding their stuff and there's links to it. So if you have SQL injection link, it'll kind of come down and everything they saw there on Zap itself, they're kind of putting it in the report. I'm um, in different capacities here, right? You know, if somebody uses CWE for the reporting, you have kind of that, that content there. Um, it might, I guess a little, I think that's why some people download the other one because it doesn't really give you like a whole lot. Here you go, here's a request. I ended up like downloading like a different one. I forget the name of it that's on here for reporting because it's a little bit nicer looking and, and easier to navigate around and trying to you know find out what's going on in, in this report, just the uh, Zaps kind of own report that's there. Um, but everything's there, right? Here's your guest, your request and, and response for whatever finding there is. Right. It doesn't really look like it's nice to highlight. Um, and so I think that's some of the some of the downside, right? Like you're not really getting that, you know, the highlight of exactly what, what's going on. Um, where, I mean, that was a CSP header, but mm -hmm. for this, you know, I think it's nicer if you actually take a screen capture of like the actual window here. And you can put these side by side um, just by changing the top up here. And you can kind of get a little bit more of that if you want. Yeah, just need a bit more screen real estate then. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> You need one of those ultra wide, you know. Yeah. Uh, Ian has a quick question. Does Zap yeah. have good tooling for JWTs? Yeah, there's some features in there. I actually um, go over my book. Let me uh, go down to it. Yep. JSON Web Tokens, Marcus. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me go to find where I put that. There we go. So, yeah, I even talk about it in my, uh, my book. 
kind of in a how-to with JSON web tokens. I don't think you're going to find necessarily like the same type of like extensions that have been added in Burp. You know, I guess it all depends on the community and like what they're looking to add to it. Um, but you can kind of see some of the stuff that comes through um, and do stuff, manipulate things in the in the request editor, you know, for your web tokens. Um, there is like the, in the tools, there is like an encode decode hash feature that is kind of helpful for it. If you have like something that's up here, you can you can get like some feedback on the decode. Um, I don't know how functional it is. Let me see if I can find like a sample. Yeah, see, I don't, yeah, I don't think it has like a very good like decoding for JSON web tokens. And I think it's kind of where you have to like leverage other tools like JWT.io to like break it down and decode it. There might be an extension that community built in here. Let's see if we can find something. Or did I have something? Oh, there we go. So just a reformatting view of JSON and then like detecting JWT requests and scanning them for vulnerabilities. So that's just something you would have to like probably add to from the marketplace to your own Zap. And then it's in alpha status, so it's not, there could be bugs with it, depending on it, its development. So just kind of keep that in mind, because when, like, when you're in the marketplace, you'll see stuff that's like release, beta, and then like alpha. So, you know, your alpha stuff might not be like fully working for you. You know, you're not going to get like, get back something that, that you're actually look, looking for, like what it's asking you that it can do uh, versus like release that it's like ready and made and works good. So I think that's kind of like one issue with Zap. Um, just be aware, you know, it's it's open source, right? So it's based on the community that's going to put support behind it and develop for it. Um, so there's a lot of tools that you might see that's already being built in like Burp, but people just haven't focused on Zap. Um, so not that it doesn't have the capabilities. I think it just needs, you know, someone to probably build it out a little bit better. All right, thanks. Um, Sarath asks, does this tool generate report by file name? By file name? Yeah, so if I hit that again, it's is this what you're talking about? Kind of like renaming it. Uh, I'll see if Seraph uh, responds. Uh, Seraph, uh, does this answer your question? Yeah. Mark, yeah I mean, Mark, sorry, sorry, I I missed it. Uh, okay, now I see it generating the report. Yeah. So yeah, reports, and then um, go into generate report, and then you've got um, whatever. If you want to try to name it, there's templates that you want to include or exclude from your report. Um, looks like there's even themes. Theme ones, you know, if you need XML versus Markdown versus uh, PDF, JSON, etc. Default will just go to like HTML usually, and you only add some other filters here to kind of narrow down like what you're building. Um, and then the pattern for naming it, you know, if changing it up a little bit. So like every time that you run a report, just it puts in the schema that you want it to be, you know, as far as date and stuff like that. And is it possible to get all the files in the report instead of just one? All the files? Yes. Like like a kind of scan report, you know? Yeah, yeah. So you're talking when you come to like your filters and your, um, where did it go? Sometimes the uh, theme gets all jacked up. We have to find which default theme. Hold on, so I can use it on myself. <clears throat> you're talking about like this kind of like, oh, I request response body. Okay. These, you know, summaries. Is that, is that the information you're talking about? Yes, summaries. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you don't want all this other stuff, you can always just turn it off so that it doesn't generate in the report. You know, sometimes your, your request body or your response body, is, they're massive, right? If you have some kind of um, uh, um, like error, you know, some SQL error or something that, that's popping up on screen. Sometimes those can be pretty large, so that's where you'll you'll want to tune it down. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. And here's like your, your kind of other comparison stuff too. They're, they have some different functionality that I think is interesting comparing with different sessions. You know, if you had previous sessions open for, um, you know, either the same web application or, or something in the environment that's the same. I kind of help you between the past and the present and see what's happening, the differences that in the changes that have happened. There you go, get a little glitchy on me. Uh, uh, it's like, sorry, go ahead. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, just doing, a, we got about five more minutes uh, to wrap up. So there's another example. Uh, you want to work through or if there's more questions um that we can address then... sure yeah i guess you know you talk about your your methodology um you know typically when you you run your first scans um you kind of want to like either start manually by just like poking around the website itself a lot of the times things will start popping up here see like you just something else just added um you know and that's that's beyond doing like dirt buster you know you could do fuzzing right like if i want to change this parameter of search and just do fuzzing and then i can start trying to do like what dirt buster would do and looking for new paths that are on your URL. It's quite the drawing there. <laughs> so um, poking around manually is going to start helping you just figuring out like what's in the application. How does the application function? Um, you know, logically, right? From a developer standpoint, 
um, that way you kind of get ideas of like, how can I start screwing around with that logic? Um, and then just seeing what else is there, like what other, what other fields that you can start clicking on that are inside here, like pictures. Um, and then one thing I, you might've noticed when I was opening this, that I couldn't click over here is because zap has like these two bars from their HUD that, that come down the side here. And so there's like, like a hidden overlay that's happening. So sometimes you might have to just widen up so that it, you can actually select, see like, uh, there, there it goes wherever you see you're, there's like your boundary so if you notice like you can't click about us just kind of <laughs> go for it. you might have to scroll over a little bit just as a word of caution when you're using their built-in and that might be a difference why you want to use like your regular you know firefox or chrome versus the built-in one because this is just irritating you because you can't you know can't get to something a feature um there's usually a history that happens up in here too or your web sockets like, i think probably because of my memory that's not showing you very well um and then to get rid of this on the side just click this green one too and that'll help you as well get rid of what's happening on the overlay so that you can actually start clicking around but see there's more stuff popped up i don't know if you saw it come up over here so that's where like doing kind of manually it's, it's starting to passively take account now if you want to speed that up right that's where you right click and do spidering um and then you can kind of you know uh, let's do sub trees or whatever right if there's more stuff going on uh, you can click advanced options to show up here to those those parameters you're talking about mike that you were looking for more control over yeah. um now you got some more of that data to do or like uh, slow it down or speed it up right how much size yeah the last thing you want to do is ddos the application you're trying to <laughs> you're trying yeah. to scan so like unless something else came through for oh, classify. Yeah confidential document they found something confetti um and that's just a juice shop feature by the way that's not zap that's just juice shop doing that but the nice thing is like once you start scanning and and like walking around the application getting a feel for it like stuff is still going here on the side as it's still crawling um and you can you can stop that coming over to your spider uh whoops there it is i think it's just it blasted so much that it did stop but there's still more stuff coming through so that I've seen that happen too on the fuzzer or even the active scan that it's just sending so much data so quickly that even if you stop it, like you've got to give it like five minutes or something like that for like the rest of the request to like finish. Um, and then this is what's going to give you kind of like your, your first walkthrough on your application, like low hanging fruit, like what am I going after next? It kind of gives you like a methodology to attack. Did someone have a question? Uh, let's look, we got a late joiner, um, but yeah, Marcus has a question. Would the fuzzer be Zap's version of Intruder? Yes. Yeah. So when you're trying to fuzz, um, let's go back to, I don't know why this went way up here. Hold on. I'm going to like minimize sometimes you need it. I got like screwed up. There we go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Zap does weird stuff. If like you double click on something by accident, just try first double clicking on the bar <laughs> to get back to your, your screen. Um, and usually these like bars here on the, on the side, you know, sometimes like your request response was it disappear. But um, to go back to your original question, yeah, fuzzing is what's going to um, be like intruder. So that's where you're like, you're talking like sniper or like the battering ram or whatnot. So you're just going to be creating more payloads versus um, how they have drop down menus. So let me see if I can just do, let me get something with like actual. Um... So if you're trying to like, you know, find something else, um, one thing to note, you won't be able to edit right away. In here you have to hit the, the edit button so just that's where you're gonna like if you want to just put you know change it up and then hit save then you can go back and select like where you want to fuzz so actually i'll just put an extra space here so this is where you're adding your payload right if we're, we're trying to do um what happened to theirs oh well i guess i should do it manually right this is where you're doing your manual so like what is in there i think there's score scoreboard or something like that right if you don't know like how they're doing scoreboard like you can do it that way. Um, you can always like just add more lists from themselves. Like here's their buster list, right? But if you had something else that you need, like if there's username and password, right? Then you can select something again and add another payload. So that's going to be separate. That's kind of where it like, comes into like the battering ram versus sniper, right? You're just adding more payloads. Um, one other kind of topic too, if you're talking like grep match, you can do like, you, you can add like another payload um, inside of here to on, I think it's, um, I think you have to look for either regex or strings. Um, we talk about it in the book a little bit better and and then you have to actually like type it in. So that's that's where you're gonna actually do like your grep match. It's still in the fuzzer. It's just adding like another payload and adding it on like your your string or, or a, um, a regex probably in, in order to like find what you're looking for. It gets a little weird in that sense. But yeah, this is your intruder. Yeah, and here's here's what it looks like when you have like over the top. Yeah, it's all like the smiley faces or yeah. suns or yeah, suns. Suns, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> 
yeah so now it's kind of like oh like, hey something came back it, it you know it reflected or that's not always true and that's kind of like where you have to like start looking for like another another way to find um right like it could reflect but it the application is not actually doing anything it's just kind of like coming back and saying like oh yeah you inputted this and here it is again but there's really nothing happening so you usually always want to like validate again you know the same payload if that's you know actually doing anything it does i don't think it is to be honest i think it's just kind of spitting stuff back see how see it's kind of finding stuff like in the actual like headers so like those are just be kind of like junk you know that and that's kind of the all kind of dynamic scanners are the same way. So you always have to kind of validate what you're using coming back. Unless it's something like very simple, like, you know, you're talking, oh, anti, you know, CSP policy is not set in the header. Like that's a pretty easy, easy find, right? Like you, you're you looking over here and, and you don't see anything. And you're like, yeah, okay, it's not there. Um, and that all depends on like how they have it set up, right? Like sometimes different applications use like uh, different headers, you know, XXSS um, headers and stuff like that. Any other uh, questions? So yeah, we got time for one more question. So if anybody has questions, I go ahead and ask now. No, I don't have a question. Just a nice presentation. Uh, I learned a lot. I, I've been using Zap for like six months now, but still kind of trying to break the habits of burp. So yeah, it was a nice presentation. Thanks, Marcus. Yeah, hopefully it wasn't too quick. Like I said, Zap is just, we almost dedicated like three chapters to just the options alone that are happening in, in Zap. There's a, yeah. It's very powerful. Um, even in the book, we go down on how to build uh, a simple Jenkins pipeline and add Zap as a dynamic scanner into a pipeline so that you can actually get um, code, your own code, like your own repos scanned. And okay, that's yeah. I'll, I'll definitely be getting the book for sure. Mama. Yeah, I appreciate it. Maybe I'll, I'll see you out there at HackspaceCon. Um, and my other my other author and, and good friend of mine, Nesto Torres, he, he joined here. He must have been the... Uh, the, the straggler coming in so i'll point him out yeah he, he was a late join so we can blame him <laughs> yeah. yeah sorry guys i was uh i was i was stuck in traffic that was my bad <laughs> no worries, no worries. It's all good. Good. Yeah. worst case i blame brian it's, it's all his fault so it's all good yeah He'll last, be, uh, last minute yeah. Ad. <laughs> hey can you post the name of that convention in the chat so i can uh, look oh. it up and the date and everything yeah i'll pull it right here Yeah, they're not. Um, it's going to be over at Cape Canaveral. I think it's in the Kennedy Space Center, to be honest. It is at the uh, it's at the Kennedy Space Center, but it's at their educational building. Okay. Uh, you still have to go through security gate to get to it. So if you do get a ticket, uh, you do need your ticket and you need an ID ID to get let in uh, through the security gate. And, and they they posted like last week or the week before saying if you had already signed up and you'd already signed up for, say, some of the free training on the 14th that you needed to go back to Eventbrite and actually get a ticket now it's free uh, for the for the free training uh, mm -hmm. but you still need to get that ticket so that the security guys will let you in um so yeah the april 13th is the april 13th through the 14th because there's two-day training but it's professional training that's where the cost is at um for training wise then the 14th is free training they're like two hour blocks uh, of different topics and then the 15th are the mm -hmm. speaking sessions and the villages uh and that's where again there's a cost to unless you're a student or a vet, um, both get heavily discounted. Uh, if you're just paying normal, uh, then it's a $200 ticket charge. And if you want to do the after party dinner, uh, that's another ad that's $70 to get dinner. Um, otherwise you don't need to do the dinner, uh, but there's still stuff going on afterwards at the dinner at the hotel, which is the Radisson. Um, so you go from Kennedy Space Center over to the Radisson to get like closing remarks, raffle results, CTF results, like all that kind of stuff. So uh, if you don't do the dinner, that's a good time like between Kennedy and Radisson to go out and grab some dinner somewhere else uh, and then head over to the Radisson to catch the rest of the stuff. Also Friday evening after the free training, they're doing a pool party. So far they've not said there's any cost for that. Um, so go in there and, and you know, grab a drink, grab a slice of pizza or whatever food items they're going to have, right? And then just hang out and network and stuff. So it should be a lot of fun. Yeah, this is our first year, right? I think. Yeah, first year. Yep. A lot of big names uh, doing training and, and talking uh, engagements. Some good villages. They have the drone hacking village. They have the um, covert entry uh, village. And actually, it's one of the CTFs as well. Um, forget mm -hmm. well, Periwinkle Village, which I've never heard of. I actually got to go look it up and see what that is. Um, 
they had the mental mental health village. Uh, trying to remember from my memory as 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 uh, Brian scrolling <laughs> through here. There's oh, a lot of stuff. Yes. <laughs> Going faster. This will be a good talk. He just got out of jail in like 2020. Oh like really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It'll be kind of interesting. Well, it's like uh, Secure Miami a couple of years ago had uh, what's his name? Uh, I always draw a blank. I was gonna say Puffy, but <laughs> it's not Puffy. <laughs> um oh man i dropped like this thing anyway that and now he's doing a whole podcast with the guy that arrested him um yeah I'll, of course i'll remember the name like middle of the night i'll be like oh it's that guy but yeah so it's cool sometimes that they get uh, some of those uh types of speakers too yeah so uh, brad mentions considering this is all new three months into learning computers for me all that went way over my head but hopefully i'll learn it sooner rather than later interesting info nonetheless although not understanding much no, I mean, the, the best thing is like jump in feet first, right? I mean, expect yeah. to, to fail. That's how you succeed is, is an, and, you know, it's a great way to learn. So, you know, you know, whether it's grabbing uh, Ryan's book or, you know, just going over to the OWASP site uh, for Zap, you know, catching some of the stuff that's published out there. There's, there's YouTube videos as well. And there's plenty of resources out there um, to go through and help you uh, as a beginner or for those of us who may not be beginners, but don't use it enough. And, like I still have to Google tons of stuff. I, there's no way I can remember it all. Uh, I just don't use it enough to to just get that muscle memory, right? So, you know, don't don't feel discouraged. I guess that's the message. If you don't know, that's okay. Like that's great. And that's the opportunity to to have those fresh eyes and go out and and grab stuff and just learn it. Like you'll you'll be successful. I just uploaded the uh the Pawning Owash Juice Shop. It's like their website for walking through that. Uh, so it's a great tool, uh, resource. We use that a lot. Um, Port Swigger Academy, we actually use a lot too, which is pretty funny. And yeah, I forgot. I mean, that's another great site to go to. Free training is Port Swigger. Um, grab that one and, and just log in. Free free user account generation. Get on there, walk through the tutorials, do some stuff. Yeah, and that, that's a good start to get into web app pen testing as well. Um, I think you have to complete like all the novice and apprentice level um, training that's there, and then you can sit for the test. It's $100, but it's pretty brutal from what I hear. Yeah, and and they want you to have the professional version of Burp Suite to to get through some of the oh, items yeah. on there. Yeah, somebody asked that in December when they announced the hundred dollar uh, fee for the cert. And somebody asked, "Well, do I need the professional version of Burp to be able to complete some of those tutorials?" And that they answered yes. So you got to be careful about some of those. I guess it's later in the series that you start really needing the professional. Yeah. Yeah. Great, Marcus. Hack the Box Academy certified bug bounty hunter is nice. Mm -hmm. um yeah try hack me has its stuff as well they have a free tier too try to think uh we hack purple is a great community to get into if you want to learn about appsec uh we have we hack purple has lots of tutorials and stuff a great community to be part of and ask questions and stuff yeah and a, a yearly membership with OWASP will get you access to her I guess some training that she puts on Tanya Jen Jenkins I think right yeah, yeah Tanya and Jenkins there's also a few others that are like built in with the the membership, um, like AppSec and uh, it was it AppSec Engineer, and I think it was like Secure Flag. That's by OWASP. Mm -hmm. Some different uh, AppSec DevSecOps type of training. Yeah, and the membership for OWASP. I mean, it's not required to come to our meetings. Our meetings are free to the public. You don't have to be a member. Uh, but if you want to be a member of OWASP to get those additional benefits, I think the the, the yearly charge is only like $50. It's real cheap compared to other professional orgs. Uh, so Marcus dropped his LinkedIn. So if you guys want to network, feel free to drop your LinkedIn or other socials and connect. That's great. Yeah, Tanya Jenkins was at B-Sides Las Vegas last last year. Uh, amazing talk. Like if you ever get a chance to see her talk live, uh, she's a, just a fantastic speaker. Yeah, her book too is, is a really great intro in AppSec. You know, Alice and Bob do AppSec or something like that. Is what yeah. It is. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know I've like I've given that over to a few friends who got into AppSec and it was just kind of like, here's a here's a nice icebreaker for all the weird terminology you hear with the dev teams and yeah. you know their processes because they're always getting into like these scrum terminology and it can confuse you at first. Definitely. Yeah, so tons of great resources out there. Many of them are, are free. Um, so yeah, just take a look at things, find your favorite ones to learn from and, and go from there. Next thing you know, uh, Brad, in three more months, you'll be an expert. All right, whether well, there's nothing else, we are over time. I don't mind staying longer as long as Ryan doesn't stay long, doesn't mind. Uh, otherwise, we can go ahead and call it. And uh, I will see you. Great talk, pleasure to meet you. So Professor Piro, great talk, pleasure to meet you. Hopefully see you at one of the one of the events. Yeah, great. Yeah, I just want to echo that too from my end. Thanks so much, Ryan, for coming out tonight and spending your time with us. I know I really put a limit on you. There's so much more stuff you can cover and, and you had to kind of race through a lot of it just because of the 60-minute the time frame. 
Um, maybe sometime in the future we can have a longer one. Uh, also, be aware for everybody who is here, uh, Ryan is going to give a longer session, right, at uh, August 19th, I think is the date. I forget the date. Um, oh, yeah, I think we're we're doing another book signing there on um, the Cigar City Sec. So we, we can talk um, talk shop. So another event on the on the golf side. And then, like you said, he'll be there on uh, April 15th on the Atlantic side for the Hack Space Con. So, uh, yeah, thanks again for sharing your knowledge tonight. Uh, getting a lot of, of great compliments back on the, in the chat, too, if you haven't seen it. Um, so that's all. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the recording.